to come. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So first up, let me just say, right, I've been doing uh, morning pages for a while, which is like from the artist way, um, um, where you write three A4 pages a day, just of whatever comes into your head. It's really, it's, a, it's I really like it as a method of journaling. And um, so, uh, one of the outcomes of that is that I have eventually decided to get off my butt and put my my body where my mouth is, my body where my mouth is, um, and I'm going to be starting to do teacher training. There you go. Probably not, I probably won't be having it together by September, but certainly, hopefully by January, uh, doing 200 hour introduction to yoga teacher training. I need you to keep me accountable. I've been talking about doing it for years, and uh, now I know the lockdown has given me space to to commit to it. So I am now committed, and I now made it public. Thank you for witnessing me. So now I have to just go and do it. Um. So yeah, there you go. Um. So thank you for that support, and now I invite you to come and find your centre. Find your center, find your breath. Just land and notice what's going on for you. So a lot of the time, all these things are bubbling around, a bit like my teacher training, bubbling around in your body. And we're busy, we suppress them, we close them off where you don't have time, um, all of these things. So maybe none of that is quite as true today. So just see what it is that comes up. Also, we can be afraid of what comes up. We can be nervous that we don't want to see it, we don't want to know about it. But knowing that it's all doable, that nothing comes up for us that we can't cope with. It's just the way it is. Also knowing that sometimes when we work from fear, it brings us against ourselves. So instead of hiding from whatever comes up, invite it in with openness and curiosity. And so with that in mind, let's come to standing and see what's in the physical body this morning. So starting off, have a little wiggle. Have a little rock and roll. Swing your hips into the arms. Side body spine and then I'm going to ask you today to see where is it that you typically ignore because we all have this pattern and you've been doing this now for a while so you have a pattern so your pattern may be to reach up the pattern may be to fall forward your pattern may be to do side body so notice for you what is your dominant where it called you the most and then look to see where is it calling you at all? Where is the hidden part? The, where is the shadow? Maybe it's feet. Maybe, like I say, you, you like the forward back stuff, but not so much the, 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 there's the side body, this way. Or there's the twisting. There's the forward and back. They're the fundamental movements. And then there's different parts. So head and neck, shoulders, hands, wrists, hips, knees, feet, and ankles. But just notice where are those are you engaging and where are you not engaging. And then let it all eventually come to stillness. Take a moment to celebrate that you are listening to your body. How do you know that? Well, because you're here and you just moved without me giving you direct instructions which means you are listening to your body. Find your feet on the ground, really pick up your toes, rock your feet from side to side and plant your toes 
so that you are solid, earthed, connected. As we reach for the stars, we need to stay in the earth, not float away. From there, softness, cropped. Uh, prop the, the stick up your foot position, Sergeant Major, to collapsed. My little teenager back in school with her homework yesterday, looked like this. And between that, find neutral. Checking out neutral. And then let's just check out what neutral is on these shoulders. What we're working with today. You don't want to go dog and pull um, a bit more shoulders. So find neutral flat because maybe we're working on a little laptop that has laptops are small and um, that has our shoulders around it. See, can we broaden your shoulders, roll your shoulders back and down? And then imagine, then take a position with shoulders back of whatever it is you do a lot of today. If it's, it's obviously not driving. So if it, with the laptop, can you see how this is our natural position? Your, maybe your natural position is more like this. Then like this. And so bring that into your day. See how can you change the location, the position? Can you change keyboards? Can you move your screen if you're, you know, so it's at eye level? And then come again to start the flow. Soft knees, inhale to length, exhaling to roll. Inhaling to expand and taking it with your breath at your time. Exhaling, coming down a little bit more. Inhaling, expanding a little bit more. Opening the shoulders, particularly that's what we're playing with this week. Exhaling, down, this time coming to flat back. So as you push through your feet, push through your legs, through your foot, through your, your spine, your shoulder, release your shoulders back and head forward. So this time let's head forward our shoulders back. Exhaling down, coming down into your squat. From your squat, we're coming to lunge. Right leg back. Playing and releasing. How has this changed? How is it this morning? Meeting yourself afresh. Instead of saying, oh yeah, I know this one. See, new cells have been born in your body. Things have happened overnight. How is it that you are this morning? How is your hip? How is your breath? How is your legs, your calves, your hamstrings? And then when you're ready, stepping together. From forward fold, bending knees, coming on up. Power through the legs, power through the legs, reaching for the stars, and back to prayer. Let's go again. Inhale, length, exhale, curl. Inhale, expand, reach, open, open the shoulders broadly. Exhale, coming back down. One more time, inhaling, reaching, maybe coming to your toes, allowing head and back, maybe not popping the belly. Exhaling, this time we're gonna stay down, but forward folds so through your legs, Spine, reaching forward, releasing the shoulders back. What's forward fold like with shoulders back? Exhaling down into squat. And from squat, stepping back with the left foot this time. Into your late wakey up your lunge. So each day we do the exact same movements. And yet each day they're slightly different. Meeting whatever it is that's present. When you're next on your back foot, stepping forward, bringing both legs forward, bending the knees, bending the knees as you come through, reaching for the stars. Back, and we're gonna go straight on. Inhaling to length, exhaling to curl. Go with your time, and if you need to miss a bit, miss a bit. Inhaling, open. Exhaling, release down. This time coming on to flat back. Um, flat back with shoulders released away from your ears. Exhaling back onto the, into squat. Hands on the ground ready for plank. Now really check your placement of your hands today because we're going to be working on shoulders. But as you come into plank, see what it's like. 
How are your shoulders in front? Can you release and move? How's your foot, your belly? And then in your own time, onto your knees. Scooting through either eight point pose or uh, just laying yourself down. Coming long, shoulders back again as you come up to cobra, whatever length height you wish to do. Exhaling back down, pushing through flat back, through hair, into dog. And playing in your dog. First dog of the day. Have a little wiggle. Bending the knees, taking the foot as far back as possible, having that ski slope. We're all about skiing this morning, bending the knees and having the ski slope. And when you're ready, stepping with the right foot to wherever it lands, the left foot to meet it. As you go through the ski slope, the bend the knees, reaching up for like a mountain pose, and back to prayer. Letting your breath settle and then going on the other side. Inhaling to lift, exhaling to roll, taking your time, managing it with your breath as you reach for the stars. Tall mountains, even if that. Exhaling down, coming to flat back. It's called this chair lifter for the time, for the laugh. Exhaling back into squat, from squat, stepping with the left leg this time. Right leg to meet it, plank. What's with your shoulders, long neck. Releasing, knees, chest, chin. Coming long and up to cobra. Whatever height you want to come this morning, shoulders away from your ears. Releasing down, pushing through hands. Protecting your lower back through hair into dog. First, second, dog of the day. What is it you want to do? Do you want to stay in stillness or do you want us to move? Is your head active and between your ears? No, hopefully your head is between your ears. Is it between your arms? When you're ready, stepping with the left, where does it land? Doesn't matter, just notes. Meeting it with the right, bending down to rise up. So sometimes when you're falling your ass, it's only so you can get back up again. And when you're ready, we're going to do one more round, which is going to lead us into dolphin and puppy dog. So we won't be going to hold. Inhaling to left, exhaling to roll. Inhaling to expand, open, exhaling, folding forward and staying down, coming through to flat back. Flat back, releasing shoulders. From here, bending again into your squat, stepping back, but this time we can avoid plank and we come straight into dog. Take a moment in dog. From dog, we're coming to dolphin. So you want to put your elbows where your hands are. Two options, onto your knees, replace with your elbows and come back up again. Or directly from dog, coming onto your elbows, into dolphin. How is dolphin for you? Let me have a look. Oh yeah, looking nice. So take it easy, it's tight. If your shoulders are tight, be gentle. Never push or pressure your shoulders. When you're ready, coming down onto your knees, maybe coming through a hair pose where you're just extending the shoulders and having a little release through shoulders. Maybe even taking the shoulders wide, arms wide if you need to. Easing it out. And from there, we're gonna to come to puppy, one of my favorites. So puppy is with your Knees are bent, knees are bent, foot stays in the air, this is like your happy puppy. And then extend the arms out like for dog. When you do that, the key is keeping your butt over your knees and then not allowing your back to collapse. 
So rather than like a bendy back, really engage your belly, take your esophagus to your spine, take your belly towards your spine, engage your core, any of these descriptions that help you so that you have now a flat back rather than a collapsed back. Particularly if you're flexible or if you have a tired back. And then see about the shoulders. What do you want to do with your shoulders? Can you release them? Can you roll the shoulder blades? Can you give yourself more space between your ears? Maybe you want to wiggle your bum because you're like a happy dog, a puppy. And then when you're ready, sitting back on your heels, coming back through hair, and from hair, just coming up to seated, releasing the shoulders. From seated, one more transition. How do we transition down? I have to turn or I hit the furniture. Transitioning onto your back. How oh, a little rock and roll on your back. Take a little play time on your back. If you want to include tilt and flatten, now is the time. If you want to include happy baby, now is the time. And then ultimately bringing yourself through to a twist, have a little twist both directions or windscreen wiper so you're really going from side to side. And then finishing with a symmetrical movement. So when you're ready to come to seated, hug your knees into your chest. So don't, don't rush it, but just hugging the knees in have a little roll up to sitting or rock around and come up to sitting, whichever way it suits you. And then just be. Taking a moment. Setting yourself up for success. So what does that mean? It means getting all of the supports that you want, that you need. And then coming to your breath. Notice, are you settled? So just check it out. Notice, are you compromising? Is there something that you said, oh, I'd love that, but I'm not going to bother because I haven't got the time and everybody else is settled and she talked about doing the breath and blah, 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 blah. These are the voices. Notice if it's true. I see some fantastic use of props. That's really good. And come to your breath. Let your breath settle. Bringing your breath deep into your belly. Feel how it expands your entire torso, just finding your breath and playing with it. If you like abdomen, abdomen breath, then stay with this for the entire meditation. If you like Ujjayi breath, you could also use that. With this belly breathing. Letting your focus be on the physicality of it initially. Feeling the breath. Feeling your tail, feeling your head, feeling the connection from head to tail. And then slowly let that connection, that attention soften. So there's less attention on the physicality, knowing that at any point you find yourself getting distracted or need to come back. 
This physicality of the breathing is a really good anchor. And fundamentally, that's what it is. It's an anchor. So then allow yourself be. We've been working with the four agreements, the Taltec tradition, the Taltec wisdom. And there's a second book, The Voice of Knowledge, which kind of explains a lot of the philosophy that is being used in the four agreements. It's a fantastic book. And when we were looking yesterday, I invited you to explore and to to notice all the voices in our, that we have contained in our brain. Noticing when we use the word, the power of the word, and when we use that, the power of the word to bring us to places of black magic or, or darkness or unuseful thoughts, beliefs, versus creating magic, white magic, using that same voice to create empowerment, positivity, and all the, the bringing us in the direction that we want to go. And so in keeping with that general idea, there's a story about uh, a wise, a uh, Taltec teacher that sat by the fire is talking to two young, young boys. And the boys are asking him about these, these voices, about how to know, how to, how to not wander down the, the spiral of replaying old stories that are unconstructive or unuseful. And so the wise shaman says, inside each of us, there are two wolves, the white wolf and the black wolf. And both of these wolves are constantly in battle. which you'll know, because as soon as you say you're going to do something, immediately all the reasons why you won't do it exist. And so straight away, there's this battle between the white wolf and the black wolf continuously. And so the shaman describes in graphic detail, because they're boys, all of the battles that the white wolf and the black wolf have. And eventually the boy, one of the boys look up and say, well, you know, wise man, which wolf is going to win? And the shaman says, the wolf you feed the most.
Allowing the sound of the bell just pass through you. Allowing your attention to come back to the physicality of your body. Noticing sounds. Noticing sensations. And then setting for yourself an intention for today and if it is around watching when you feed the black wolf, when you feed the white wolf. Releasing and moving. So an example for me this morning, saying to you that uh, using you as a witness for me was me feeding the white wolf so that I am going to do the teacher training. So see what strategies you can put in place to really support you feeding that white wolf. Also, it's Tuesday, if you're watching this in real time. Um, so there's a class tonight. When you're ready, we take our hands together. We offer peace. Om Shanti. Om Shanti.